Hello, everybody, and welcome to MinMax Party Chat, a new show from MinMax. Hello, everybody in the Discord stage. Put your hands in the air if you can hear us okay. Say hello to everybody that perhaps might be watching this. And Jeff, um, don't put your hand in the air. Jeff, um, you should actually jump up here. Uh, hello, everybody. Welcome. I'm Ben Hanson. MinMax is a patron about games, friends, getting better. I'm joined by Janet Garcia. Yo, what's good? And Sarah Podzorski. Hello. Hello, welcome. Uh, what you're seeing is a new show, a new format. This was the show that was previously called MinMax Council. We've kind of been testing some changes. It's kind of been in an alpha state for a while, I guess you can say. And then this is what we actually want to do with the show. So if you're watching this, thank you. On the right-hand side of the screen, you're seeing Jeff from Jump Up. This is stages or singular stage. Does anybody know how you word this thing? Stages in Discord, which means... We would have a call-in show once a month previously with this show. Now, basically, every Monday at noon central is a call-in show with the community for more interaction, more engagement. We could bump people up to talk and say whatever they'd like. All they have to do is raise their hands, little icon to the hands, whenever they have something to say, and we'll jump them up and we'll talk all about it. Uh, Jeff, can you hear us okay? I can. Can you hear me? Oh boy, can we? Thanks for being here, Jeff. Um, uh, this is it's very fancy. The big Min Max party check. Uh, party chat. We hope you all enjoy it. Um, in some ways, it's almost like a bonus podcast each and every week. And if you're curious about how to join this sucker, first of all, you can unlock it in the Patreon exclusive podcast feed, the same place where we put the podcast version of the Deepest Dive, early access to the MinMax show, a bunch of other fun stuff, the podcast version of all of our interviews, all that stuff. So you support MinMax on Patreon at the $5 tier. You can jump in and unlock this show every single week, and it goes right into your favorite podcast app. It's a piece of cake. You just copy and paste something, you're good to go. Um, also, if you are listening to this show and you say, well, I want to be a community member that actually talks to people. I want to talk to the cohorts every single week. Um, you can do that as well by jumping up to the $20 tier, the MinMax Council tier. That's how this whole thing works. Um, Jeff, what's your favorite change to MinMax this week, would you say, man? Um, Pressure's on. Question. Don't blow it. Don't blow it. I mean, it's. I guess it's ridiculous to say this this thing right here, but I'm just so flabbergasted by this technology that I hadn't seen until now. That it's cool. Yeah, I put it off for a long time, but I really like it. Like the call-in shows were great, but there's always like that intro and outro and all this stuff. And now it's just as quick and easy to bump somebody up as you could possibly imagine. Like, here we go. Uh, Leafeon had their hand raised. Let's get them in the community ready to go. But uh, also today in the community. Oh, Jeff, is there a baby in your midst? There may be a baby on my lap right now. Yes. <laughs> Oh, that was someone cheering, but like Special in a guest. really sad way. Aww. Yeah, I thought someone was going, woo! Yeah, the chat was basically <laughs> screaming. Hey, Leafion, how's it going, man? I'm good. How are you guys doing? Doing good. Doing good. Uh, did you see that Patreon post, Leafion, of all the changes to MinMax today? I did, and I am extremely excited for everything, especially, uh, well, a couple of things, but yeah. especially the Jeff Cork and Sarah Podzorski Chibi Robo playthrough <laughs> as the next Patreon goal. Yes. So if we hit 2,900 supporters on Patreon, we are going to do a full Let's Play of Chibi Robo for the GameCube. We've had people uh, screaming at us saying to cover more retro games, to do more Let's Plays, to have more Jeff Cork, to have more in-person content that's quote-unquote cozy. That's the way people describe it. And there's no cozier game than Chibi Robo. So if you help us hit that goal by spreading the word about MinMax, letting us hit 2,900 supporters, which is doable... Then we're going to get uh, Jeff Cork and Sarah Podzorski in the MinMax studio. Um, I'm going to be there too. I'm sorry. Um, and we're going to play through that, that freaking game. Sarah, do you have any sense of the, the history, the legacy of this Chibi Robo Let's Play? I, I don't know about the history, but I do consider myself a connoisseur of Chibi Robo. <laughs> When's the last time you played Chibi Robo, do you think? Probably like two years ago. Oh, my God. All right, you're going to be fresh. This is going to be great. You don't just, like, play Chibi Robo. You don't just, like, load up your GameCube and play Chibi Robo sometimes? No. Honestly, I don't think I've ever played Chibi Robo. I've never... I've seen, like, clips of it because the, the whole, whole saga for this thing is that uh, back at Game Informer... I mean, Jeff, do you remember this? It was probably 10 years ago. Jeff Cork started fighting in Super Replay Showdown to do a full Super Replay of Chibi Robo. 
and he got screwed every time and every time he was so close and it just <laughs> yeah. didn't happen. So this is his one chance that nothing can screw him go. unless everybody immediately cancels their Patreon <laughs> support and the number drops dramatically. It's the only thing that can rob Jeff Cork of finally playing Chibi Robo. So please look forward to that. Uh, Leafion, okay, so Chibi Robo, that's what you want. Yes, Chibi okay. Robo, and I'm so happy about the TikTok. And I checked mm. out those videos so far, and uh, good job, because I'm excited to see what's coming out of that. Yeah, I should have listened to everybody a long time ago. So uh, if you didn't hear the news, because it's being broadcast on all the speakers around the world, uh, MinMax is now on TikTok. You can follow us at MinMax Show over there on TikTok. Um, we're going to be sharing clips. We'll probably do some original stuff as well, but out of the gate at least, it's a lot of clips. And what pushed me over the edge was like the community last week when I was streaming Pokemon Legends Arceus. Um, Shazira and other people in the chat were like, yeah, just upload Trivia Tower clips. I was like, oh, of course. That is That seems like the perfect TikTok content. Um, Jeff, I assume you've never downloaded TikTok. And I'm not pointing fingers, but I'm just assuming that. I've never downloaded a TikTok? You mean the app? Yeah. No, I haven't. Okay. I... I I, I know this is uh, maybe not up your alley. I think it's worth checking out. Like Janet and Sarah, how how often are you on TikTok? Janet, I know you're going nuts and creating a thousand a day. Um, I don't make that much stuff. <laughs> I want to make more. I get really lazy with it. But as a consumer, I'm on there a lot. Like yeah, I'm, I'm scared there, like, to every see. Day. Oh, definitely every every day, multiple times a day. Probably, I'm gonna try to look at my analytics and maybe share them with y'all right now. But like, I live on there. So that. I'm I'm horrified. By the way, yeah, raise your hand if there's any topic that we cover and you all want to jump in here. Um, I uh, I was trying to keep my distance from it, and by the end of this weekend, I was glued into that crap. I could it's not. Dangerous. It's a drug. I it told is, you it's amazing. Like yeah, people think not, it's you're not selling me on it. Right no, now. but it's not <laughs> in my veins. It's not like Twitter yeah. addicting. I think there's something really wholesome, and there's something. This seems weird to say about TikTok. I understand it has its problems, uh, connections to the Chinese government, but there's something strangely democratizing about TikTok where it's just like, here's a glimpse of just people all around the world and people around the States being really creative and by and large, really positive. And it just fills you with goodwill about like the creativity of everybody outside of the big media broadcasting States. Am I nuts, Ian T. Clark? No, not at all. Matter of fact, Jeff, I'm, I, I am a, a couple of years older than you and I think I'm actually the uh, officially the second oldest MinMax Discord community member. Nice. But Wait, yeah, anyway, yeah, um, I love TikTok. Now, granted, I have kids. Like I have a 20 year old in college, and I have a 13 year old son. So I've kind of had to stay in tune with mm. a lot of these apps. But TikTok is something you can curate to your uh, preferences or you know topics that you're interested in. You can. Right. Um, now, because of our demographic, uh, demographic, I mean, uh, m- male people, we sure. tend to get some un, uh, not the friendliest of uh, suggestions, but you can filter all those out, say you're not interested. Like most of my my TikToks are stand-up comedians like Nate Bergazzi or um, Call of Duty Warzone clips or Halo clips or video game clips. And it's it's just really great. You can curate it and it is the fastest way to waste time. It's yeah, it is just um it is the warrior wear of YouTube. If if I may put it that way. We're just like, yeah. blah, 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 just like going as fast as possible with just like, oh this is cool, this is cool, this is cool. Oh that's crazy. Okay, this sucks. Swiping past that. Um yeah, it's it's bizarre. Like Sarah, what is um, your what, Oh, go ahead, Jenna. I I do have my stats here. Yeah. Um I am on TikTok last week, for instance, Sunday through Sunday, whatever, 7 days if that's how math works. 14 hours and 50 minutes. All right. You know, that's a lot. Or but 14 hours and four minutes. Uh, second to Twitter, which is 14 hours and 50 minutes. And you're feeling good about this? Honestly, I'm shocked that it's so high and also that I've done so much with the other time I have. <laughs> yeah, I guess you, you squeeze it all in and make the rest count. Um, yeah, I don't know if they're both open at the same time. Like, I feel like it's not that it doesn't feel that high <laughs> in my actual. And that's like counting desktop usage on Twitter because I always have that open on the side as well. So I don't mm. know. But it is a lot. Um, well, yeah, I, I, I've had a good time with it. And the crazy thing is, yeah, I uploaded stuff. We have one follower that just randomly found us, um, but I've been uploading stuff since Friday and like the trips from Clivia, the clips from Trivia Tower already have like a thousand views. I was like, that's, that's way more impressive than I was expecting. It's better than, you know, 
embedding stuff on Twitter. So if there's discoverability for us and people find Trivia Tower through that, I, I'm excited to keep experimenting there. Um, let's see. Sarah Pozorski, we also have another new show that we're announcing here at MinMax this week. Yes. Take it away. Oh, no. Wait, you just told me the name like 20 <laughs> minutes before this. We had the community vote on the name. Um, here's The only thing in my mind is cream of the steam. No, no matter what, the only thing you need to know about this show, the new show, is that it's not called cream of the steam. Cream of the steam! If we, see, had, we had a bunch of name suggestions. Serial had the great recommendation of... Steam of Consciousness. We had a bunch of different names, and then we let people at the Backstage Past here on Patreon vote for the best. And the winner was Steam's Secret Stash. So the way it's going to work is this is... I swear I saw some comment a while ago, Sarah, that was talking about, like, nothing's better than watching Sarah jump into a game she doesn't quite understand and scream while trying to understand the controls and figure out what's happening uh -huh. in this world. And so that's basically the show. Yeah, okay. <laughs> I didn't, I didn't realize that was the show. I thought that it was about the game. <laughs> I but guess. you just want to watch me struggle. Yeah, well, it's about the games and everything else. So what this is, it's Steam's secret... Steam's... I'm sorry, cream of the Steam. Steam's <laughs> secret stash. So the way this works is the first Tuesday of every month, except for this month, we're doing it next Tuesday because we're recording the deepest dive in Pokemon Legends Arceus in a bit. Um, but first Tuesday of every month, we're going to go on Steam and Sarah's going to download just a random selection of games you've never heard about that released in the last month on Steam. As we all know, there's like a thousand games releasing on Steam every day. They're all wild. And so we want to just download all of them and then with the community kind of choose which ones we're going to explore. We're going to filter out, sorry everybody, we're going to filter out all the booby stuff, mm -hmm. filtering out uh, visual novels, DLC, and the big games. It's just going to be a uh, you know, rapid fire, if you will, of absurd Hopefully interesting little games just to see what is actually happening out there. And the big thing is, I know we've got a lot of requests for people on uh, Twitch and elsewhere wanting more group streams. So the idea is every month this is going to be me or perhaps another cohort, another friend of the show, joining Sarah for uh, Steam's secret stash. And we're going to be putting that archive uh, publicly on YouTube after the fact as well. Sarah, what do you think about this show so far? I'm kind of excited it's really like a mixed bag but i'm i'm expecting to see some gems i think so i think we're gonna find some cool stuff in there even just like you know we did it on extra life for the last couple of years and i always enjoy those segments it's like we should just make this a regular thing like we have access to all those games on steam let's jump in uh other stuff other big updates um and by the way raise your hand if anybody wants to talk about an update that we posted on patreon today and, and dive into the weeds on this I, i'd love to hear it um but other thing is uh crossfade season two Crossfade is coming back. That's our music podcast, which is not a Patreon exclusive. It's available to everybody in their favorite podcast app. You can search for Crossfade. It's hosted by Matt Helgeson and Jason Daphnis. Matt Helgeson, former host of the Game Informer Show podcast. So uh, last season, every episode was about picking a guest. They pick an album, one of their favorite albums they most want to talk about. Matt Helgeson picks an album that he wants them to listen to. They listen to each other's albums for the first time and then review it and discuss it on the podcast. So it's kind of like a, a dueling album review show is how we put it. For this season, the early discussions with them at least is, uh, I think they're both really good and Matt Helgeson knows just an absurd amount about music. And so the idea is there's going to be some episodes that break that format a little bit just to be more themed topics. Let's talk about the, our favorite concerts we've ever been to. And we just talked about that on the podcast, but you get the idea. Uh, let's talk about a deep dive in why you should appreciate Prince. Just all these themed topics. That'll be kind of the journey. And then we're also going to have guests and the first guests they're going to be announcing uh, very soon. So look forward to that. Uh, let's see. Do we have any questions in the community? Raise your hand if you want to talk about anything other than these Patreon updates that we're slowly going through for folks. Oh my gosh, dirty data. Let's get you on up there and then get you on up there as well. Um, we also have questions, by the way, if you're watching this and you say, I want to be involved in this show, but I don't really want to like jump in and have my voice on this podcast, which, you know, we'd love to hear your voice. We're sure it's beautiful. But if you don't want to do that, that's fine. Um, we're also taking questions from the chat still and also from the Patreon post. So people watching us live in the chat, if you just hit at MinMax show, we'll take all that. Be sure not to miss your question. Uh, yeah, God's Chimney, what's going on? What do you want to talk about? Hey, what's going on? Uh, I'm really excited for all the, the changes that are coming. I didn't get a chance to read the Patreon post this morning. And yeah. I'm pretty busy. So uh, hearing you talk about it, I, I mean, it's it sounds great. It all sounds great. Um, oh, my question was going to be, are, do you plan on changing anything about Trivia Tower or just keep mm -hmm. on chugging through? It's now going to be twice as hard. Um, that's going to be the overall. Oh, I can't. <laughs> I can't uh, no, uh, you know, I, I don't think so. Maybe that's naive. Um, 
but I would love to keep rolling with Trivia Tower. I think it's working well by and large. I do, I, I'll probably put up a Twitter poll sometime soon to figure out, like, I would love to do special themed episodes. Uh, maybe do an episode all about film trivia, just to like, try and shake it up a little bit. Um, so I, we might be doing that this week. I'm sorry, Jeffem's baby does not want us to do that. Which I is, I feel the same way, Jeffem's baby. Yeah, okay. he he's not into big. He's not a big film trivia guy because he's only seen like three Disney movies. Oh, okay. All right. Well, he'll get around to it eventually. But yeah, so that's the plan for Trivia Tower. It's kind of full steam ahead on Trivia Tower. I'm happy with it, but I'm always open to suggestions, and we can keep changing things up as we move along. Uh, Dirty Data, what's going on? Uh, Hello, Dirty Data. What's going on? What do you like to talk a, about? I have a question that is uh, Activision related, but I don't want to front load that. Is that okay to ask now? Sure. Okay. I think one aspect that I haven't heard on several podcasts, and I know multiple of y'all have been talking about this in different ways on different podcasts, I think there is an interesting space around the... Uh, Apple Epic conversation where Epic wanted to have a third party uh, transaction service on the Apple ecosystem. Yeah. I think if Sony doesn't allow the Game Pass on on PlayStation's PlayStation 5 or PlayStation 4 as well, right? they could have antitrust conversations. But um, it's interesting. It's an interesting space that might be more business related. Um, but I think like that's like a neat crossover between games and business, and maybe that's where the discussion is. Is like, how do y'all see where is there a need to understand more of the business aspect to have these conversations? Is that interesting for y'all? So I'll I'll mute myself. Thank you. Oh, that's fine. Uh, thanks for supporting us. Thanks for asking the question. Should we have more of knowledge of business operations for these types of discussions? I always feel. A little bit dumb, uh, wandering into these waters and just being like, well, from the gamer's perspective, but I think ultimately that's kind of what people want from us. Yes, it'd be nice if we were all extremely insightful on the on the business front, and hopefully we can add a little bit of knowledge to that arena, but at the same time, it's like, I hate to boil it all down to like, what does this mean for the gamers? But at times, it's nice to have that perspective as well, and that's what we can speak to probably the best. But then you have people like Shazira, who obviously knows that world very well, other people in the community that know that world very well, that can always weigh in and, and share their thoughts, but... Jeff, do you think we're businessy enough? Uh, you know, I think we do the the best that we can. <laughs> I'll, I'll, what's interesting is a lot of I think the legal questions are completely up in the air, and it's like you just have to wait until there's a lawsuit to like kind of establish what's going to happen with it. Um, yeah, but it it would certainly be nice, you know. Like I think of when the Epic Apple. Um, like when the verdict came or, you know, like the conclusion of it came out and people were like, oh man, this is huge. This means, you know, like this is a major victory for Epic. And then like a day later it was like, actually, maybe it's a major victory for Apple. We don't know what's going on. Right. Um, it would it would be nice to be able to have a better grasp of those kind of things. But I'm not going back to law school. Well, I don't know, man. Don't rule anything out. Might be kind of fun. Yeah, we probably should have had like Shannon Lau or somebody from the Washington Post. Uh, that'd be really... Uh, Hang on a second. <laughs> Is there some news breaking today? Oh, are you are you just seeing that? See That's what I yeah. wanted to talk what? about. What? Oh, <laughs> like finally. All right, oh. let's get into it. Oh. So, so oh, why did you all stop and just start screaming? This because is you were like you still had like your opening spiel and i'm like we're gonna get to it like and then i see like i have slack open and i'm like okay i see like sarah definitely knows about this like Holy we'll talk about it f. But okay like, don't out me for not <laughs> i just mean being like you entirely know. here well and there's time stamp the time stamps you know exposed everybody um anyway it, as far as the should we know more i mean i think it's always it would always be nice to be more informed just to have like yeah. the best perspective but it's one of those things that's like both challenging and I guess like kind of nice about the field. Like you never know when you're going to have to like step up and start to understand stuff that you didn't necessarily have to think about. Sometimes that's for really dark reasons, like harassment lawsuits and, and things like that. But um, and sometimes it's something that's kind of like just the stock market. I'm like, oh, God, now I have to learn the stock market. Right, so right. It, it keeps you on your toes. It keeps you on your toes. Um, it, speak, it, it, Janet, we got to We got to get to this news. This is sure. <laughs> right, Leafy <laughs> from the community. Would well, you want to make the announcement on the first episode of Party Chat here? I would love to make the announcement, please. Um, OK, so for those who have missed it so far, it's been about 20 minutes. But a tweet from Jason Schreier or Nibel or whoever you get your news from. 
Uh, Sony is acquiring Bungie for $3.6 billion. Wow. Wow. Yeah. And um, a little bit more details on it. Yeah. Uh, Jason Schreier tweeted a little bit more, and Nibel also tweeted a little bit more. Uh, where is it? Bungie will remain an independent subsidiary of SIE. Bungie will remain a multi-platform studio with the option to self-publish. And Bungie what? is still maintaining Destiny 2, working on Destiny franchise expansions and a new IP. Will remain an independent subsidiary is oxymoronic, but okay, sure. And by the way, raise your hand if anybody wants to jump in and talk about this as well. That is mind-boggling. It's so weird that this announcement happens right now. Like, surely it was in the works long before the Activision deal. Yeah, they had to just, like, kick that news out the door as fast as you can at that point. Yeah, so what was... I, I, I don't want to just sit back and read all this, but is anybody even reading the news? Like, so they say multi-platform, they're going to continue with it being multi-platform? Is that just the weird kind of Microsoft For wording? Destiny. For Destiny. <laughs> okay, so I wonder yes. what that means for the NetEase game, because NetEase is publishing that, what, it was rumored that it's like a, a dungeon game? Please. I think they're going to take everything that isn't Destiny and make that exclusive because like wow. the vibe tends to be what if we like have something we like make an acquisition like any of these companies we make an acquisition and then like the thing that is already you're used to getting you'll still get that for a while and then you won't get anything else and then also maybe you won't get the thing you used to get and you just won't notice because enough time has passed right right uh, catch them all Chris. Yeah, third parties are dead oh, yeah. It's. I mean, how? When was the last time a first-party studio has fully swapped from being a Microsoft studio to a Sony studio? I mean, rare, I guess, going from Nintendo to Microsoft. It's pretty rare uh, that that happens. Happens, but do do you think that Microsoft's sitting there right now thinking we could have bought nineteen and a half bungees? <laughs> <laughs> I don't Activision money? I don't know. So in the halls of Bungie, one of my favorite little things is they have a plaque that's like framed uh, in kind of the center space. And it's a declaration of independence that's that was signed by all the leadership at Bungie because they were so proud of finally separating themselves from Microsoft. So they have. Nice. Yeah, I know it's new later leadership. They have going back to Microsoft does feel kind of like going back. But uh, catch them all. Chris, what do you think about this stuff? Yeah, no, I was just about to make like a similar comment i i guess i'm just sort of confused by it and like <laughs> i don't know why i understand why sony would do it because obviously they you know want first person shooters which feels like sort of a, a big gap in their their library That's interesting but yeah if it's saying that like i'm looking at the blog post here like a clip from it and it says this is uh, from bungie on a playstation blog post where it says we will continue to independently publish and creatively develop our games. We will continue to drive one unified Bungie community. Our games will continue to be where our community is, wherever they choose to play. And like, I know oh boy. PlayStation has been making more of a push for PC, but if they're not going to make it exclusive, I don't really understand why they would fork out this kind of money for it, I guess. And, yeah. and, and it does. Yeah. Like you were mentioning before, it just seems strange that Bungie would agree to it when obviously it hasn't gone super well for them when they worked with other companies in the past. I just to be bought out completely. I I'm very surprised. This was not on my bingo card. Also. Yeah. The part that blows my mind too. Well, there's a lot that you can just kind of walk through, but there was the Bungie offshoot. Was it just, just add water. No, that's the name of the odd world. Just add monsters. But there was some Bungie offshoot by the former CEO of <laughs> Jeff. I'm that sorry. baby. That baby is so cute. Uh, that's fine. Um, but anyways, there was some offshoot. Just add something. Help me out, everybody. Um, and that was from the former CEO, Harold Ryan, of Bungie that split off. And they announced a partnership with Sony. So now it's bizarre that Sony's going to have Bungie and also the Bungie offshoots. And just thinking about... Okay, this is this is the fun part of the game industry. Thinking about the fact that Destiny was on the Battle.net launcher and now that is all owned by Microsoft. Like just mapping all of the weird idiosyncrasies with this entire thing is mind-boggling. But Blue Mayhem, what do you think? So yeah, I thought about your your point for a moment there about um, studios that go from one to the other and um First party and third party, maybe not, but second party games kind of come to mind. Insomniac made several Sony exclusives. 
then made an Xbox exclusive and then got purchased by Sony after they made two more Sony exclusives. That's true. So I, I think there's a lot of studios out there that have played both sides in a more robust market. Um, I think Janet has made the point multiple times, like, hey, you know, third parties are going to go away if we consolidate the market in the way they have, which can be slightly scary um, as yeah. someone who, I, as you can see from my avatar, I have um, uh, Sekiro, but in the form of uh, Wind Waker. And I think games like Sekiro and games like that studio that makes those FromSoft games, they've they've kind of played the field. Then a game that they made that was on all platforms was published by Activision, which is now owned by Microsoft, which yeah. of course... You know, it's it. I think it's in this fluid nature. The the independent studio who's not making the indie darling, uh, they're in danger because if they don't make enough sales, they go away. And then of course, if they don't make games for a first party, they can also go away because they can just be kind of walled out of that garden, so to speak. Yeah. It, okay. I'm really the idea of them wanting to still do publishing is optimistic that they would have that in there because it seems like Bungie's always been pushing or in the last 10 years been pushing to do more publishing games on their own like i want to say there's some pirate game or something they were developing or they technically published and released what a crazy world i'm looking forward to digging through all that news any other hot takes from the group so far um, i don't have I just, a hot take oh sorry catch them all go ahead oh no i just wanted to say this is <laughs> totally off the cuff but I, yeah. i'm doing some more reading and um jim ryan apparently uh, made a statement on it as well. And the, the sentence is, Bungie has created two of gaming's most iconic franchises, Halo and Destiny, and has deep expertise in bringing incredible immersive experiences at great scale to the community through games that evolve and develop over time, yada, yada, yada. But I just wanted to, to say that it's so strange to have Jim Ryan uh, publicly calling Halo one of gaming's most iconic franchises. Obviously yeah, it is. I love and that. it's, it's yeah. cool to see them, like, you know... Um, acknowledging it but it's uh i wonder <laughs> i just probably wouldn't have happened otherwise so it's just a weird world we're living in yeah what a world and like you know one thing I, yeah. the other thing to notice is like these companies want to be bought like, do you think you, like people can't you, you can't just like allow your company to be, to be bought without an approval like they're accepting being purchased right right well you know uh if somebody offered a gazillion dollars for your studio, I guess that's tough. And maybe just leadership has changed at Bungie just enough to be like, well, maybe it's time to go and collect a paycheck again. Maybe Jason Jones is ready to retire after all these years. And I think or maybe liked, they need more funding to support the future of what they want to do. Yeah, that could be. I mean, they yeah. pulled the netties, yeah. There's uh, that old saying, everything's for sale if you have enough money. And I think <laughs> right. that we're seeing that, you know, in action to a degree. Again, that's not to imply that these studios don't think that this is a good move for them. Like whenever I see any news of any acquisition, my like comments always pretty much been the same, which is, well, hopefully that's good for that studio that's being acquired. Obviously, I assume they wouldn't say yes to a deal that I didn't think would be creatively and financially advantageous for them. Yeah. But we'll see what happens. Um, and, and for this, it's mostly the same, but I think because of the scale of it, there's naturally a little bit more of a reaction versus, you know, when Netflix bought Night School, I'm like, OK, well, I mean, we'll see. Maybe maybe Netflix is you know going to boost up their gaming where they're going to have some really good titles. But right. it wasn't like no offense to night school that's not really an industry shifting moment that requires further analysis it's more of just okay well that that's just a small thing a small change yeah yeah absolutely um so uh, bob beal submitted a question he said i can't hear, be here for the first party chat today but i have a question inspired by the new halo tv series trailer raise your hand by the way in the community if you want to jump up and talk about the halo tv show um he has what's your favorite time a movie or tv trailer used a dramatic slow emotional cover of a song so I don't know if y'all saw this, but they have a slow emotional cover of In the Air Tonight for the new Halo trailer. Did any of you watch that thing yet? Mm-mm. Uh, it is bizarre. Um, oh, Ian D. Clark is on it, of course. Um, it uh, It's just, it's the classic thing. And a lot of people on Twitter were screaming like, Uncanny Valley, all that fun stuff. It's just weird seeing like a covenant in real life. They got Jen Taylor, the voice of Cortana, to physically be Cortana in this thing and so that's naturally jarring for people uh ent clark what do you think of that halo trailer i really really want it to be good it's not only yeah. do i need another show to watch with my wife but I, there's been so many bad 
adaptations of franchises that we love. And I, I'm holding my breath for the Uncharted movie too. But when you're thinking about Halo, it's such a, uh, th- like the set pieces would be ridiculous. I mean, just yeah. even to get in the same playing field as, as the games. Uh, and I don't know if you saw in that trailer, the, the covenant that I think it was an elite soldier or something. It was really quick. And I, you know, yeah. I didn't have it in me to do a pause to see how good it looks, but that's going to be a lot of CGI. Yeah. There's got to be huge budget behind this. It is, it is set up for failure and it will break my heart. Yeah. I, here's hope. It's interesting. It's interesting to see that it seems like they're changing up the lore quite a bit. Like the fact that it seems like humans are looking for the halo because they think it's a weapon now. And so kind of having a different take on the lore might be interesting. I'm curious to see how it moves forward. Spencer bees. Did you watch that sucker? Uh, yeah, yeah. I guess I'm not as optimistic. Yeah. Um, I am fine with like the timeline stuff. I'm fine with them completely changing the show and having, having it be almost divorced from the game series. And obviously I'm, you know, I'm rooting for this, but I just don't know if it's like a mistranslation. I just, I'm just not convinced that Halo is going to be able to be translated into movie television. Well, it looks a little cheesy. It just yeah. like all of it just looks a little forced. Um, I'm totally going to check it out. And, you know, I'm hoping to be, um, you know, I'm hoping to be proven wrong, but um, yeah, I watched it and was, and wasn't super stoked on it. Yeah. I'm curious to see the reviews. You know, we talked about it before. I'm curious how many people compare it to the Mandalorian. It's like, ah, oh, people like masked protagonists now, fully armored protagonists. So there's at least a precedent of that working out. Okay. But obviously a different voice for master chief, sure. throwing off some people and all that stuff. Um, in terms yeah. of Bob's question, favorite time a movie or TV trailer used a dramatic, slow, emotional cover of a song. I gotta say, I don't mind those Batman trailers where they have that Nirvana song. Like something in the way. I think it's kind of cool. I know it's a cliche. You're not supposed to like these slow, sad sack versions of these songs, but am I nuts? <laughs> Can you all think of anything uh, of any other trailers that it kind of pulls it off? It's not a trailer exactly, so it's kind of cheating, but the um, I think it was kind of like in the opening credits for Black Widow. They had... Um, God, was it also Nirvana? I yeah, think, it, was. it was. Smells um, like Teen Spirit. Yep. What is? Yeah, smells like Teen Spirit. I yep. actually thought that cover was very good. I, I kind of enjoyed that too. Yeah. Right. That... It was good, and then it, it fit the tone really well. I think it tell like I, I think it really served a purpose there versus I, some other times it just feel like what if we just took a popular song and made it weird. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Hey, Sarah. Yeah. I um. I was listening to over the weekend. I listened to all of giant bombs game of the year debates and all of easy allies game of the year debates, yeah. which was a lot. Um, huh. I, I enjoyed all of it. Easy allies in particular. I think they did an excellent job. Um, but in the easy allies podcast, they did so much just gushing over final fantasy 14. Wow. And I know that we've done it in the podcast. We did it during the game of the year debates, but it got me to the point especially with them talking about the story. And I know everybody says it's the best Final Fantasy story. I think you've said that 3,000 times, right? It's good. It's definitely the most cohesive one. And MMO has the most cohesive Final Fantasy story? Well, because you're able to do it, right? Like, everybody gets kind of an arc. You see, like, conclusions for so many characters. Sure, sure. Um, So, anyways, I, I realized, like, oh, you know what? I had a really good time watching, like, the movie cut of all of the Mortal Kombat reboot games and so it's like i kind of want to do that for final Fantasy 14 and i tried just dipping my toes in the waters on youtube for like movie cut of final fantasy 14 story yeah it seems impossible uh, it seems yeah that would be kind of hard i, I just that imp- like it, it was the equivalent of like i mean we're talking 30 hours to watch the movie version to get up to the point do you really think there's no way to abridge that like i would watch 10 hours like a TV show of it. There's just no way to boil it down like that. I mean, I mean, it depends Were you just watching cutscenes, or was it just someone explaining what happens? Yeah. Maybe it recaps way to go. It was kind of like the movie the, cut. So it was cut. Because the cut, cause some of the gameplay, like some, like when you're playing, like there's story baked in. Right. Right. So you're like only eating like half of the meal and you just don't, you haven't like touched the rest of it. It, it would be very hard to just do like a super cut. Versus like Kingdom Hearts, where you'd probably get a general gist of it. Right, right. Okay, so I just can't experience Final Fantasy fourteen story unless I spend realistically hundreds of hours with this sucker. Yeah, 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 yeah. I think I'm on like mm. eight hundred hours. Oh my god! 
You're a machine! <laughs> uh, speaking of that, I saw that you're streaming Arkham Asylum on your own Twitch yes. channel. I would, yes, very surprised to be doing that. Yeah, what, is this like a community vote? How did this happen? Well, I was talking to my community. We have this really big list of games that my community thinks I should play. And yeah. I, like all of them, they, they usually go back and forth, right? They usually argue like for and against certain games, but they all unanimously agreed that I should play a Batman game. A Batman game. Okay. And weird. then it became a war between Arkham Asylum and Arkham City. But never once have I seen my community like unify over a singular game. <laughs> right. But and anyways, they- it's... It's been a, I don't know anything about Batman. What? What are you talking about? I have spent my entire life like trying to learn as little as possible about Batman. <laughs> so going don't into tell Arkham Asylum. Parents. Oh God, yeah. I got some bad news. Yeah, going into Arkham Asylum where this is like, they're like, oh yeah, this is like everybody from the Batman universe. I am so confused. I think it does. I mean, we just did that game for the deepest dive. Was that last year? Um, and I think it does a pretty good job of setting everybody up, right? Like, there's some weirdos of, like, I don't know what Calendar Man's doing over there in the corner. I don't corner. know what you mean about setting people up, but everybody gets a cameo. Right. Yeah, but I think they kind of explain, like, you know, how confused can you be? Poison Ivy, she's a hot lady, she controls plants. You kind of get the idea, right? I was I was struck, I was, like, the first person they introduce you to is, like, Oracle, and I'm like, who the hell is Oracle? Oh, and you're open right. open up her thing, and they're like, oh, she's the police chief's daughter, she was Batgirl, she, you know, now her legs don't work anymore in an accident. Now she's Oracle. And you're just like, wait, what? <laughs> That's got to be like five different episodes of something. Like something went down there. That's wild. Yeah. Okay. Let's, uh, everybody in the community, Starkiller, thank you for being here. Um, if anybody wants to help Sarah or give her the Batman quiz, this seems like a good time to do it. Like, Sarah, do you know? You, let's see. What's a Batman quiz question? Hmm. That's not obvious. Like, you know who his sidekick is. Yes. Okay, you got that. Um, let's see, you know what happens to his parents. Yes. But I didn't know the extent because they make you watch it in Arkham Asylum. Right, right. And I was like, are you kidding me? <laughs> like, it's the thing is, like, the more I learn about, like, the exact details, like, maybe the less I should have known. Mm, well, it's a little confusing. And then if you watch the 1989 Batman, it's actually the Joker that kills his parents, which is the way that... I grew up just knowing that version. So the idea of like, what? Joe Chill? What? Who is this other murderer out there? Are you enjoying Asylum so far, though? I am having a lot. I can see why it's, you know, it's really paced really nicely. I can see why everyone wanted me to play it. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's pretty fun. It's definitely got that 2000 vibe to it. Yep. Was it 2009? But I appreciate I that. I appreciate that, where it's like stealth isn't really stealth. What do you it's mean? It's more like a run and gun. <sighs> Okay, you want it to be more stealthy and more serious. No, 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 no. I think we should all take a step back from stealth in video games. Oh. We should take a full five steps back and revisit the run and gun. Yeah, I guess in that game it makes it worthwhile because you, you got to wait a little bit, but then to just like pop into combat is so satisfying. Like, are you enjoying the, the fighting and all that stuff? I mean, it's it's okay. I mean, maybe if I had played it in 2009... Yeah. I would be, it doesn't like hold up as well compared to some other games, but my favorite thing to do is hang upside down on gargoyles. It's very good. As the Batman and say, I am the Batman and yeah. then tie people up. That's it. That's, that's why that game's mm-hmm. great. Starkiller, what do you think about all this? <laughs> How say you? Uh, I, I've been watching Sarah play it, so I wanted to give her kudos to it because it's, it's a very fun stream to watch to somebody who hasn't played that game before because I've played it, I don't even know how many times. I've 100%ed it a couple times. Jesus. And so I more or less have it memorized, so I'm trying not to backseat with too much so sarah just tell me to shut up if i backseat too much <laughs> um yeah, but here. yeah but it's 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 such a it's such a good game and i i because that's exactly what happened to me was i you know i watched the animated series i'd watched justice league a little bit um but i didn't know a whole lot about batman until arkham asylum came out and i'm like oh and i'm in deep <laughs> you can't ignore it yeah yeah uh leafy on you watching the stream too yeah um <laughs> It, watching Sarah's stream has been like weirdly enlightening because <laughs> I'm in the same boat as Star Killer. Like I knew about Batman, and then I played Arkham Asylum back in 2007, and it like completely changed. Like really introduced it to me, and then I actually read comics now because of that game. Oh wow! And like my entire life has just been like totally flip turned because of that game in 2007. Like how deep I got into comics and just. Batman lore in general is so is so ingrained just like in my life 
yeah. now that like like I can pull anything out of a hat. So I'm sorry, yeah. Sarah, if I become an insufferable know-it-all in the comments in the chat for your stream <laughs> for posting stuff, because seeing somebody who has not known anything about Batman play this game is just it's so fascinating. It's a lot of fun. <laughs> Well, it's like we walk up and I didn't realize when they said Arkham Asylum, they meant like a literal asylum. Oh, and then wow. I went, I thought it was a city. And then all of you guys were like, no, 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 that's the next game. No, no, it's actually always been an asylum. And I'm like, I thought it was a city. And you're like, no, 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 they take a part of the city and they give it. I'm like, what is happening? Yeah, they turn the city into a larger version of asylum in the second one. Uh, what do you think about uh, Mark Hamill as the Joker in his performance so far? I mean, all the all the voice acting is really good. I, I can't really... It doesn't really sound like Mark Hamill to me, but that's all because he's doing his job well. That's right. That's right. Uh, I, do, I do ship Batman with the Joker mm. very strongly. I do believe that there is something there. I think there is. I, Joker, it's like... We didn't talk about it too much in the Deepest Dive, but throughout that game, he has like... I don't know. He's kind of playing into those tropes of like the effeminate villain, I guess, or like kind of leaning into like homophobia in a weird way. Do you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. He's just a lot of like, oh, why don't we kiss Batman and that type of stuff? Yeah. Like, okay, so yeah. Is, is he doing that because he just likes pushing society's buttons and he knows that Batman's homophobic? <laughs> like, what is the layers of depth that I should really think about what the Joker is going for with all these just stupid jokes? When realistically, I think it was just, yeah, the Joker had made jokes. In 2009, I guess that included some homophobic jokes. What are you going to do, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it really does show the age of the game, but they should kiss. They should absolutely kiss. Well, I don't want to spoil the end of that game, but it's basically <laughs> a big old freaking smooch fest. Janet, you ever played the Batman games? Not really. I only started one of them. I think I started Asylum, the one that Sarah's playing. Yeah. Because I, well, don't you hang upside down on Gargoyles and like all of them? <laughs> it's right? a it's yes, absolutely. So who can? I think I was in the Asylum. Does it? it is there like a boss really early on where you have to like jump onto them and like? I don't know about a yeah. Ooh, yes. Like, okay. Yes. Then yes. Who I didn't recognize as Bane. By the way, because you only know like the movie Bane? Bane. It probably was Bane. Yeah. I don't know. I was like, who is this? <laughs> Who's this weird muscular freak? Yeah. But yeah, I enjoyed what I had played of it. I just kind of put it down, and then never came back to it. So I'll yeah. have to pick it up again. I'm really glad I did it for the deepest dive because it's my first time going through all of it. Because I'd started it a couple times, just like you, Janet. But then actually blasting through it, I was like, oh, this game is damn near perfect. It is. Just Mr. Amazing. Freeze is in it. Is that all of them? <laughs> no, he, he's is, not. In, is he only in that one? He's not in the first. No. So, I have the one where Mr. Freeze, ex he, they at least acknowledge him. Like, there's a part of the city that's, like, super cold, and it's like, oh, that's where Mr. Freeze is at or something? That must be Arkham City. Blue Mayhem, do you know where we're at? Yeah, actually, um, I'm a big-time comic books collector. I collected comic books from a very young age, and yeah. so I have a deep ingrained love of Batman. I think, Janet, you're talking about Arkham Origins, because the very first Whoa. boss in that is Killer Croc. Interesting. And you jump on Killer Croc's back. Yes. Okay. Why? Well, I guess you just wow. jump on everyone's back in this series. This is what we've learned. Yes. But yes, that is what he I does. played then. Yes, That's he does that amazing. a lot actually, because um, when you're uh, inflicting justice by your fists, <laughs> that requires you to jump on the backs of the uh, accused, or in this case, just regular people in the streets of, of Gotham. Um, but I do have, and I, I want to give a lot of a lot of kudos because if you're stepping out of your comfort zone to play games that you maybe not would have. I, first of all, I think that's awesome just for gaming in general. But um, I do have a few questions that are Batman related that are oh, not God. going to break the bank. Okay. But okay. they are right. ones that you may have run into um, in the course of your, of just like Batman osmosis. Um, uh -huh. As such, we can start with, we all know Batman sidekicks and we know all of his, the Batman family, so to speak. But his faithful butler, Alfred, mm. has a last name. What is Alfred's last name? I don't even know this. The butler. Uh, I, I'm going to guess Newman. I, I have no idea. Hey, should I know? Oh, I know it. I know it. Does Jeff, take me in. Okay, Leo, you know it? Uh, is it P Pennyworth? Yeah. Is it is called? Alfred Pennyworth. That's correct. Oh, my God. Hell, yeah. Yes. Way to go. Um, uh, Leo Vader's here. Way to make an entrance, Leo. Yeah, hell yeah. <laughs> Thank yeah. you. Now, that's confusing and because... Oh, uh, Jeffem's child. Would you like to take this one? Um, you know, he's he's in a completely different room this time. Um, it feels like he's in my ear canal, uh, well. but he's beautiful, baby boy. Beautiful, baby boy. Um, here's that the thing. question. 
reminded me of like I got a sandwich the other day, like in December, yeah. and the guy was really friendly, and he was like, I had a Santa hat on. He's like, Oh hey, what's up, Mrs. Claus? And I was like, Ha ha, you know, here's my sandwich order, and he's like, I'll give you this soda for free if you can tell me Mrs. Claus's first name. And I was I like, What leave. kind of is this? I would, I would leave. I don't want the sandwich anymore. <laughs> I. I was like, I have no idea. And I was like, I don't, I, I, have, I don't know. I don't know. I had to Dan Google Brown. it later. I still don't know if I know, but. But there's a canonical name for Santa Claus's wife's name? Yeah. Huh. Is that from Santa Claus 2? I don't know. Okay. I don't know what, I, I, I have no idea. I just was not prepared for like a quick trivia moment at the sandwich place. And I'm like, I don't have anything for you, sir. I'm sorry. Online is telling me it's Margaret. Oh, that's right. right. We all remember when they got married. Their wedding video was spectacular. But it says she's the wife of Malcolm, parentheses, the current Santa. I don't know what, what? this is about. <laughs> the hang Santa on. lore goes deep. Well, hang on. Yeah. I mean, you guys... It's like Batman. You talked to him this year, right? When Malcolm came by your house and we all said, hey, what's up, Malcolm? How's the wife? <laughs> old Marjorie, that old battle axe. Uh, Blue Mayhem, is it just a coincidence that Alfred's last name is Pennyworth and then... Here's a deep cut for, for you, Sarah, and uh, maybe other people. Is Batman has a giant penny in the Bat Cave. He has a T Rex and a giant penny, like a stuffed T Rex and a giant penny. And it's like a weird canonical thing. Is that just a coincidence? The penny worth and the giant penny? Like, where, what is that penny's story? So that is a. Um that is a coincidence of their names, but Batman is a serial collector from all of his adventures. So the two best known are the giant penny and the. Uh, the T-Rex. The penny was a scheme. It was a quote unquote death trap thought up by Two-Face. And Two-Face says, I'm going to flip this giant co coin that you and Robin are tied to. Heads up. You'll break every bone in your body. Uh, tails up, face down or heads down and you'll be crushed to death by the penny. Um, Batman survived by um, using a quarter, uh, a jagged quarter. He cut the ropes and escaped. Um, he and Robin escaped, but then he absconded with the penny through some mechanism after uh, the caper was over. But if you look through his, if you look through the Batcave, he's got a giant playing card with a Joker on it. He actually has um, Mr. Freeze's original pistol. He uh, held on to that. He has all of the Bat family suits as they've outgrown them. So one of know. the great examples that Sarah brought up is uh, Oracle. Oracle was originally Batgirl. She was um, maimed by the Joker. Um, and he kept her her costume as a tribute to her. The original Robin suit that Dick Grayson wore, he kept that when he went and became Nightwing. And so if you look throughout the Batcave, they explain all of the things that are in there from from basically every villain he's ever fought. That's bizarre. Thank you, Blue Ham, for being so much smarter about Batman than any of us. Hopefully we didn't let you down for the deepest dive on Arkham Asylum that we did. Oh, no, it was great. I do okay. have a quick question. Oh, yeah, yeah, um, sure. If I could pose it. Hell yeah. Um, I know that Janet left, but the question was more for, for Jeff um, and Janet. Um, um, Jeff, I've, li I've read your work for years. I've been a longtime subscriber to GI before, obviously, you uh, moved on to Min Max and everything. And one of the things I've kind of wondered, um, because I know you're, you, I knew you as a writer, and games reviewer when you were at mm -hmm. Game Informer. Now that you work for MinMax, which makes a lot of audio content, a lot of video content, there's not really a writing arm of MinMax, maybe 2023. Um, but I'm curious, how do you fulfill that itch? Because I, I always thought your writing was spectacular, both as a as a journalist, but then also as a as a comedy writer. Um, I always just assumed that Game and Farcer was your doing, um, <laughs> along with some of the other writers. Um, so I just, how do you, do you ever miss that urge? And it, do you have maybe a plan for Min Max to uh, maybe have some of that comedy that you used to write, or even some of that that writing you used to do for Game Informer going forward? Can you please bring comedy to Min Max, Jeff? When we've been begging you. Yes. Yeah. Uh, well, thank you. That was all very kind, kind words. Um, yeah, it's. It has been a it, a weird transition, and it has kind of been a larger life transition, I guess, just because of the way everything happened with Game Informer. Um, and I I haven't been writing a lot, um, you know, like in my personal life either. And I've been okay with it, which is which is weird. I've I found that I I think the thing that I miss. And I still miss most about GI was just the conversations that we had with the people, you know, that we worked with for 
years and years and those kind of friendships. And I, I, I get that from MinMax. It's, I've, I've just enjoyed, even though the format's different, I've enjoyed being able to sit around and talk about games with people that I've known for a long time and people that I've just met and just having fun conversations that way. So I'm, I still like writing has become less important in my life, but I, I feel like, you know, it's still ingrained in me to some extent. And when I, when I return to it, I, I want it to be a more, you know, driven from a personal place and a more kind of rewarding, rewarding way. I don't, I don't know that I, I don't want to just jump in and, you know, do it for money, I guess, <laughs> you know, right. Are we, are we talking great American novel it. level approach or what, what does this mean? No, I, I don't know. I don't, I don't, I don't even know what it would be at or what it would look like at this point. So I'm, it's just like, I, I enjoy what I'm doing now and I'm really busy with raising the kids. So I'm, yeah, I'm okay. Just not doing it now. I would, I would like to make, <laughs> could you still hear him screaming? Child in yeah. Question. Yeah. He's yeah. busy. <laughs> Yeah, uh, I, I do, I do still like. Oh my god, he's losing his mind out you there. You call that raisin? Yeah, I, I do still like making, you know, funny content, and I would like to make more funny content here, but it probably <laughs> wouldn't be um, writing at this point. Really, Leo? Do you ever worry, like, if you just took years off from editing video, like that you'd just be rusty going back to it? Yeah, <laughs> and I, and I would realize how good that life is <laughs> of not editing video. Easy street, yeah, yeah. Do you do you not like editing? Editing, I will be done with as soon as I can afford to. I feel like my <laughs> my opinion was different a while back. Yeah, uh, when I first started doing YouTube, it was like I I'm not confident an editor would pick this right takes or whatever. I have my own personal style, but not anymore. I put enough hours into it that if I can afford to hire an editor, I definitely will. Just get it out that freaking door. Yeah. It's just the least fun part of the process. There's like writing, shooting, and editing are the three tent poles of it, and it's by far the part I look forward to the least. Huh. Yeah, I still really enjoy it, but as long as there's something kind of creative about it, like just, you know, I guess I'm still editing here basically every day, but it's a lot of just like all right, trimming out this part of the podcast where Kyle's audio is all messed up and then trimming the intro, trimming the outro. And every once in a while, like those video essay type things, there's a little more editing there and, and stuff like that. But I, I kind of miss just that feeling of being able to really craft something that can really, with through the use of editing, bringing something that is a six up to being like a nine. You know what I mean? Whereas like the yeah. podcasting editing is just kind of like, it's utilitarian in, in a lot of what? ways. Exactly. What I really want is just somebody to do the utilitarian part of laying everything out, getting all the clips in order and stuff, and then being able to do a creative editing pass on it. Right. Without all the busy work. Yeah, get all the, the fun stuff in there. But yeah, I, I remember, um, this is a, a weird thing to remember, but I, one of the sweetest pieces of feedback I ever got at Game Informer was one time, Brian Albert, uh, when he was an intern, he went on to work at IGN. I don't know what he's doing now. Um, but I remember he was like writing his big blog post about his time as an intern and in it, he talked about like, yeah, I watched Ben Hansen edit a video and I've never seen somebody move that fast. Like it was mind boggling that he was editing that interview that quickly. Um, and it was one of those things of like, yeah, I, I used to be really fast at editing and I feel like I've just slowed down, slowed down in a big way. Cause I just don't do that type of stuff anymore. I guess I'm still fast at like trimming a podcast, but there was a while there for just like, okay, quick video feature with an interview, interview with a developer, bam, 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 I can get that out the door, hot keys are down cold, I got it all. And a lot of that was kind of with Final Cut Pro and then moving to Premiere, I never feel like I'm moving fast in Premiere. I also remember being really impressed by how fast you edited <gasps> when I was interning. Oh, thank God. Game Informer. But it's also the element of being in an office a little bit, right? Because it's like you go to this station to do this task and as soon as you're done with that, you can leave. Speaking of like the studio computer. Yeah. Yeah, that is true. Um, Sarah, do you do video editing at all? You've done some, right? Yeah, but I do like very minimal. Like I put two clips next to each other and I'm like, wow, this is, I'm an artist. I am an editor. <laughs> like I'm very, I'm very good. But I use like DaVinci to just oh, like, because it's free. Yeah. So I'm not going to put a bunch of money into it, but well, I remember mainly that. Before you started at MinMax, I feel like you were doing kind of highlight clips of your streams for YouTube. Was there any lesson at the end of that? It just wasn't worth it in the end? 
Yeah, it was just like <clears throat> a lot to do at once. Yeah. Um, so it like eventually just fell on the back burner. So it was just, it's like, it's a lot to like get your clips, edit your clips, upload your clips, especially YouTube, which has a horrible algorithm and like SEOs and stuff. And yeah. <clears throat> now, Jeff, um, um, God bless it. Would you mind just muting your mic? Maybe when you aren't talking, I don't want to discourage you from talking. I did. I did mute it as soon as I heard him. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Sorry. No, that's fine. That's fine. Are you sure you muted? I'm not seeing the little icon. I just pressed the button on the Yeti. Oh, interesting. Okay. Gotcha. Um, by the way, anybody else want to raise your hand? We are welcome. We're up for talking about anything. Uh, raise your hand if you want to jump in, ask a question, talk about changes. Oh, we got, uh, we got Kyle S here. Um, is it okay if I cry on the mic? Yeah, I think so. As long as it just sounds like you're crying from another room, just kind of like a light wail, I think is greatly appreciated. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. <laughs> Sweet. Uh, hey Kyle, what's going on? Hey, how's it going guys? Hey, uh, was- pretty good. What's up? I was wondering if any of you guys watched uh, Resident Alien. Resident Alien? Yes. What is that? <laughs> it's a show. I, I think it's on sci-fi there in the U.S. It's um, Basically, it's about an alien that goes to Earth um, with the mission to destroy the human race. And it stars Alan Tudyk, who plays, um, oh. I guess, Everything. the guy that he's shape-shifting as that he kills in like the first few minutes of the show. And then takes over his life. Huh. Yeah. All right. I guess if nobody watched it, I guess I won't go into no. too much about it. It's good though? Yeah. It's like a good mix of like comedy and, and drama. Just like, you know, seeing this small town go on and, um, you know, just seeing um, everybody kind of interact with a guy just trying to be human. Yeah. I kind of like, I mean, there's plenty of room for comedy there. It's like a third rock from the sun. They, what ringed what yeah. nine seasons out of that basic idea, but I like the idea of the shapeshifter. That sounds cool. Yeah. And yeah. I don't know. I, I, I've heard a lot of buzz going on about the show. I thought maybe one of you guys would have watched it. No, sorry. We're too busy watching other stuff. Let's see. There's a, there's a sci-fi hump when a show is recommended. That's on sci-fi. Yeah. I think that mm-hmm. makes it harder to, harder to get into. Yeah. Unless, yeah. It's, unless it's defiance. I don't know if I can really, or the red faction oh. series. <laughs> I did watch Defiance. <laughs> you dork. Did you play? <laughs> because I liked the game. Uh, what do you remember? If we had a little Batman style pop quiz about the lore of Defiance, how well would you do? Uh, Dexter's wife was in it. Okay. Dexter. All right. Warmer. Uh, the, the, all the aliens looked like humans with a little bit of makeup on, which <laughs> is a pretty common sci fi thing, but. <laughs> kind of distracting that works that freaking works. i'm seeing now the resident alien is on fubo for sh- available for streaming that's or a, peacock premium that's not a thing leo fubo so, no come on you, but, but come on Tubi. I, raise your hand in the chat if you've heard of fubo am i am i nuts am i only purebred number six has got you divorce cougars got you all right fubo uh, is like voodoo meets tebow <laughs> 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 Ian Clark, you know you know about this nonsense? I do, but I was going to defend Kyle S. Resident Alien, which is on sci-fi, mm. is amazing. We just finished the first season, and the second season just started last week. But it's on mm-hmm. Peacock, uh, streaming-wise. That's how we're watching it. And it is very, very good. Uh, it it kind of like skates the line between cheesy, but, but very well done done i don't it's got great actors not really well-known actors at all except for tudyk um yeah at least that i can remember but strong recommendation definitely go support it and you know get another subscription to another streaming app because that's the future uh, okay all right i guess we gotta do it no <laughs> you know what it is though i am about to get peacock premium for the winter olympics so that'll be a great excuse to check that out are you serious yeah i guess people use it for wrestling like I, you know i'm not into that stuff but I know a lot of folks in the community are um, like yeah. the Bob Buells. Right. Leo, are right. you really, is that a joke about the Olympics? <laughs> no, me and my girlfriend watched a lot of the Olympics on Peacock, but there was very limited what you could watch for free. Like oh. all the events we were trying to find were only available days later, if at all. So yeah. we're just going to bite the bullet and get premium for one or two months and Jeez. just not worry about it. I, uh, I feel are the, are oh. the Olympics starting? Like yeah, because Summer Olympics were delayed. Right. But Winter Olympics are the same. You're we're saying like they're that. close together. And February is it, 4th. Is it in China? Where is it again this year? Yeah. 
Okay. Aging. Huh. I'll watch some highlights of that. I uh, I still feel bad with Peacock that I haven't even made an attempt to watch the MacGruber, MacGruber TV show. For a movie that I've seen several times and really enjoy it, like, has anybody heard anybody talking about that MacGruber TV show outside of Dan Reichert saying it was kind of disappointing? <laughs> with, like, with that stamp of approval, it's like, eh. The idea of people saying, it's a comedy show, it gets there, it gets funny. It's just like a kiss of death. I just don't know if I will ever get around to it. That's tough. Yeah. That is virtually every comedy show, I feel like. They always take a long time to get off the ground. Yeah. you. Uh, I, I feel like I have 10 shows on my list of people saying you have to watch this because it's the best thing. So right. one um, person <laughs> saying uh, it's mildly disappointing is <laughs> yeah. not going to do other it. Other things you, to watch. You have probably Succession as number one, Jeff. What do you think is your most recommended show? Um. Well, yeah. You know, I'm like 10 Marvel shows behind at this point. I haven't watched any of the Marvel shows, I don't think. I think you're fine. WandaVision is, I think, the most interesting. And the rest of them are pretty solid. Uh, but I don't think it's like must-watch television, in my opinion. WandaVision Succession is a Marvel show. They don't talk about it, but all the aliens are fighting outside. It gets there. <laughs> yeah. Hey, what do, you, what do you think about this? Um, you know... Uh, a big successful thing in media these days is to do your crossovers, your callbacks. Do you think there's an avenue? Do you think within the next five years we will have some new show or some new movie that tries to get attention by like combining a bunch of failures from the past and saying they're the same universe and packaging them all together? Like, isn't there a way? I'm trying to think of like a failed show. Let's say that that 80s show. I'm trying to think of like failed shows from the past 20 years. If you just like got a lot of those people together and then combine them with other shows. It's kind of like a subprime mortgage thing, I guess. If you just combine <laughs> a bunch of these crappy failed characters, but put them in a new show, I think they would have enough novelty to be a successful show. Why won't yeah. you just play Kingdom Hearts? <laughs> That's literally just Kingdom Hearts in the game. Like, why won't you just play Kingdom Hearts? Look, if they go to like sitcom world and it's failed sitcom planet oh or something, God. I'd be much more interested in experiencing these kingdoms of hearts. I don't know. I think there's something yeah. there. No, that's I think it's idea. almost, yeah, Guardians of the Galaxy-ish, you know, a ragtag group. Right. Yes. And their job is they need to get their shows back on the air individually. So so take... They're actors. Yeah. Take individual shows that weren't profitable to begin with. Right. And then get all the... Go through the hassle of, like, all the licensing and right. rights and all the stars right. that were in them to put them all into one show. Yeah. And think, that's going to be super profitable. I think people would talk about it. People would write about it. People would say, what is this? It's just having like Avengers of failed TV. I if, think there's something they, there. If they did it on TikTok, I think it could work. Hell yeah. Oh, Leo and Vader. Th- oh yeah, go ahead. I think it would be really cheap to do. I think people, once a company realizes how cheap it would be to try that. Yeah. It'll probably happen. All right. There we go. Done deal. We'll get writing. Um, Leo Vader, we're on TikTok now, by the way. Yeah, I saw. Oh, good. Um, oh, good. I think your dances could use some work. Yeah. But I know it's still early. It's still, I'm just, I'm learning a two step over and over and over again. But it's kind of like this, it's a getting better type thing. People will see me evolve over the course of years, I guess. Um, let's see. Something we didn't talk about for changes to actually be announced today is, uh, something called Game Champions. We decided to call it Game Champions, Leo, by the way. Cool. Uh, so it's kind of a reboot of the $50 tier. So instead of the thank you crew, which had the, custom thank you video and all that stuff. It is now Game Champions because it's like we read the names of everybody at the end of every episode of the podcast. Their name is in the description of every show at that $50 tier. And we're thinking like, how can you make that more fun for folks other than just listing off these names? You can only say Pritham Yar Legata so many times in your life. Before it's like, I wish it had some more meat to it, so some fun to it. So the way we're doing this is if you're at the $50 tier, you get to choose any game under the sun, and you are officially the champion of that game. It's like, hey, I want Resident Evil 4. I want to claim Street Fighter 2. I want to claim uh, Jarl's Revenge. All that good stuff. Um, you can choose any game under the sun, and then you're officially the champion of it. We will tweet out that you are the champion of that game at that $50 tier, and then your name is going to be in the description along with the name of that game, and we'll read your name on the show along with that game as well. Does that make sense to everybody? Woo! There we go. And uh, and Janet, I believe, in her big meeting said, well, that's interesting. Maybe we can do something at the end of the year with all the games that people chose to be champions of. And I think I think that is a very smart idea that we can definitely can come we rank them to. all with each person <laughs> making their case? 
oh, there'd be a lot of people, but I think that's an interesting idea. We have a funky format uh, in the MinMax party chat for that. Um, all right, any other questions? Raise your hands if you've got, got a quick question you want to jump up and say hi, anything like that. Otherwise, that might be it for the first episode of MinMax Party Chat. If you enjoyed watching this on YouTube, thank you. You can unlock the podcast version of this in your favorite podcast app if you support MinMax over on Patreon at the $5 tier. We appreciate it. Of course, you also unlock access to the deepest dive, a bunch of other fun stuff, and you help support independent games media and let us keep growing, which is uh, what we like doing. And Swiggity Swoo is going to take us out with the final, final big question here. Here. Um, but yeah, thanks so much for watching, everybody. Any help sharing uh, MinMax with a friend so that we can hit the new goal and do that full Let's Play of Chibi Robo is appreciated. Hello, Swiggity Swoo. Hey, what's going on? Hey, not much. Hey. What's going on, buddy? Uh, not much. I just had a question about that game champion tier. Yeah. So if you are at the tier above that, yes, in which you get to have a picture, does that include the game champion tier? Uh, yes, it does. Yes, you're at the hundred dollar Wall of Heroes tier. You can choose oh, cool. the game to be champion of as well. And I guess if you want to double it up, you can make your image on the Wall of Heroes also a picture of that game. If you really want to cement it at home for folks, or you as the protagonist of that game. That's right. That's yes, right. Please Photoshop as much Photoshop as you can. That's right. Yeah. So all those higher tiers will unlock that. Um, and hopefully folks are interested in claiming a game and having it read on every episode of the podcast. You know, it'll be interesting for the fifty dollar supporters now to reach out to him to say like hey choose a game for the month of february here we go we'll lock it in so yeah we'll see what folks uh what folks are at overall but any other questions we can swoo oh uh, that was it I, I was excited because i just bumped up to the hundred dollar tier today so I jesus it was like a little extra thing hell yeah hey thanks for the support yeah. swiggity Sue. we appreciate it sarah and jeff yeah, um, no thanks problem. swiggity thanks swiggity sarah and jeff um. Thank, Thank you. you. <laughs> Thanks, it's about awesome. time. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thanks so much for watching. Minimax Party Chat, everybody. Uh, Party Chat, everybody. Again, we'll be back every single Monday for Patreon supporters. All right. Thanks so much, folks. Goodbye. Bye. 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 How do we leave? Um, you don't, actually. You're going to stay in this room forever, if that's okay. Oh, my God. You can help support independent games media by subscribing to MinMax on YouTube here, or you can support us over on Patreon to unlock exclusive shows like MinMax Council. You can call into our podcast. You can put a picture of your choice on every MinMax video, or you could have us plug your passion project on the MinMax Show podcast. MinMax is a Patreon about games, friends, and getting better, and we exist because of you. Any help telling a friend is appreciated.